that's probably the most common topic, <clears throat> excuse me, that I deal with on my Wednesday with Wendy calls. People asking about how they can either be a, be a private lender or how they can raise private money. Of course, if they're yeah. newer, they're looking to raise the money. But if, if they've been investing a while, their question is always about how can I lend money to? And, and some people, it isn't even on their radar. They just happen to have a couple hundred thousand dollars in a 401k, whether it's self-directed or not. And I, I do everything I can to, to say, listen, you need to uh, you, you need to be investing that money in other um, rehabbers and other fix and flips. You, you don't want to own the house. You want to lend the money. It's so much easier. The time frame is crazy. I, I was going to mention uh, <clears throat> a friend of ours, Wayne Schaefer, who is a oh, yeah. uh, wholesaler, fix and flip. He also does uh, a lot of uh, turnkey yes. and, and rental stuff. He did a presentation on the hourly rate from the flipper to the attorney to the real estate, agent. Real estate agent and then the, the private lender. And the private lender had, well, based on the per hour, yeah. it was like $5,000 an hour. On wow. this. He made the most money as the flipper. But he was down to like what, one hundred and twenty dollars yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah, it was a <laughs> big, maybe. big difference. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's kudos, very, very eye opening. Yeah. So are you are you one hundred percent a lender at this point, or are you still doing some fix and flip? No, we do other stuff. So I have two flipping companies in Pennsylvania that I run remotely. So I have partners in those now. So I'm not super involved. I probably work about five hours a week in the flipping business. Just on the marketing side, we run a huge marketing machine and um, everything else we outsource and someone else takes seller calls and we have project managers and all that. And then we have small multifamily that we buy and I partner with people in stuff in other states. So like we're buying a small mobile home park in Tennessee. So I still buy stuff like on partnership, but then I also passively invest into syndications and sometimes co-GP on syndications um, and raise capital for that. So I do like a little bit of everything, but I always tell people my, my ultimate goal is really to become the biggest private money lender I can become someday. And I'm not there yet, but that would be my goal. I love, I still love like I don't know. It sounds cheesy, like the art of the deal and working on deals and finding deals and putting deals together. I still love that part. But I, before I was a solopreneur for so long, like I did my flip business by myself and bought rentals by myself. And now I don't do that anymore. I'm like, I'm either going to partner like one, two or three people or syndicate or if I'm going to like own an asset. I just see so much more benefit and so much more cash flow and less stress for me and stuff that I'm either passively investing in or I'm partnered on. The and, whole, yeah. the whole solopreneur thing doesn't work for me anymore. Yeah. yeah. And, and the freedom you've given to yourself. I mean, you, you just went on a year long RV trip. So yeah. About that, where did you go? Yeah, what did you, you do? Everywhere. <laughs> so my husband and I, when I retired at 35, I say retired to work in real estate full time. I was like, if I'm not snowboarding, because I'm from Pennsylvania, if I'm not a snowbird somewhere by the time I'm 40, this is all for naught. Like, I'm going to be so mad at myself. So when we were 39, we started snowboarding to Arizona in our RV. So three months a year, we drive from Pennsylvania to Arizona, live there for three months, and then drive back and just skip the winter. It was amazing. And then last year, my son turned 26 and he bought his own house. And my husband is our only son. My husband and I look at each other and we're like, what are we going to do in this big house like here? I think we should just sell it and leave. So that's what we did. We sold it and got in our RV and just traveled the United States for a year. And we basically just chased the weather and the national parks. So we went to all like the national parks in the United States and the United States is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we are like Montana, Arizona, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. We spent a ton of time out West, some time in Tennessee and North Carolina. Cause I have partners I do business with there and friends there. And 
it, we went all over and it was great. And I told people, I tell people like, people are like, how do you do that and still have all these businesses? I would not be able to do that if I wasn't partnering or investing passively by any means. Like a, people get into real estate and they're like, I want to get into it for financial freedom. And then when I first got into it, I was like, where is the freedom part? Like, <laughs> because I'm working more hours in my business than I did when I had a job for a hospital and I'm, I'm working like a dog and I have no freedom. So I had to learn how to, with the flipping business and the rentals, especially get out of them and just oversee them and run them like a business. And then the passive investing and partnering on stuff has really allowed me to buy in other areas of the United States other than Pennsylvania, because there's a lot of areas that are way more friendly to buy in than Pennsylvania. Um, so it has allowed me to do that and just have more freedom, like personal freedom or not chained to a desk. And I tell people in your business, you should just leave your business for three months and that will tell you how involved you are in it. Like when we started snowboarding, we went away for three months and we snowboard, we were snowbirds for three years before we hit the road full time. Every year we would go away for three months. I would be like, wow, I have to fix this or change this because I'm getting way too many phone calls and people are still way too dependent on me for things. So then we would fix that. And then the next year we'd go away again. I'd be like, wow, I am still way too involved in this. I need to fix that. So we had three years of kind of test runs to perfect things before we sure. left for a year. But I'm like, what happens to you if, if something happens to you tomorrow? Who's going to step in? Um, you shouldn't be like the only person that knows about your business and can run your business. We all get into this to spend more time with our family and have more freedom. And what happens is you get into it and you spend less time with your family and have less freedom. And that was just frustrating me. So I had to like find coaches that could help me get out of that. I was basically just like, I want to grow wealth. I want to help people do the same thing, but I don't want to do it in the way I'm doing it now because it's all on me right now. Yeah. So smart. 